Welcome back to Petapixel. I'm your host, Chris Nichols, and today we're looking at the OM System 150 to 600. We've come to the Calgary Zoo where the slogan is, Wild Canada, world there in yourself, find. True words have never been said. So let's go discover the uh, world there in ourselves to find with the 150 to 600. So the OM System 150 to 600 is a lens of elephantine proportions because it's going to give us a 1200 millimeter full frame equivalent reach on the OM1 that I'm using today. And this is a fairly hefty lens in its proportions, 95 millimeter filter diameter. It's just over 2000 grams, so just over a knocked in weight. And I, you know, I don't know, Jordan, it feels like a full frame lens. I don't know, like I've seen this before. Like it's got the proportions and size of a 150 to 600 for full frame. So we've got an f5 to 6.3 aperture, not too bad, pretty general purpose for, I guess a full frame 150 to 600. Really nice zoom ring, I like the reverse bevel here, it naturally cradles your hand and you know exactly where to get to it just by feel. Nice big manual focus ring as well. This lens is image stabilized, you got a selector switch on the side and it does work with OM System Sync IS, autofocus manual focus selector, of course we've also got our focusing range limiter, customizable button for focus holds here. And we also have, no wait a minute, I've seen this before, before, we've got a switch here to adjust the tension on the zoom ring smooth so that it will actually creep under its own weight. I've also got a tight option where it gives me a little bit of resistance and I can also lock it in position. I've seen that before on a lens, Jordan. Also, there's this handy bevel here where I can just grab this and push pull zoom. The I've seen that on a lens before too, Jordan. Now this is not part of OM Systems Pro Series line officially, but it is built to a very high grade standard, weather sealed lens, nice hood here on the front. We got weather sealing on the mount as well. And this does have a tripod collar that seems quite solid. It doesn't have clicks at 90 degrees, but it does have an Arca Swiss style tripod head cut out on the dovetail here for the foot. And that's always a positive. This lens just does seem very familiar. I've reviewed a lot of lenses. I feel like I've played with something like this before, but I can't quite put my finger on it, Jordan. So let's go take some shots at the Z and see what we get. This, this is the Sigma 150 to 600 Jordan. It's just a rebadged full frame lens. What? Yes. Okay, okay, so I think you guys get the bit here, okay? This is based off the Sigma 150 to 600, and that is, in some ways, a very practical choice because it's already a known optical formula, and it was a great lens, but also an odd choice for Micro Four Thirds. Yes, we're getting the reach, but you have to imagine, if this was specifically made for the Micro Four Thirds sensor, it could be so much more compact and give the same amount of reach, or it could be roughly the same size but provide us a lot more light. And one way that comes to mind that this particular lens is very similar to the older Sigma 150 to 600 is when it comes to flare. So it's a good thing we got this generous lens hood because you want to block as much extraneous light as possible. When you are shooting this towards the sun or if any light hits that front end light, you don't get a lot of ghosting or weird colors or anything like that, but you do tend to get fairly washed out loss of contrast. So we love coming in here and shooting the butterflies as a macro example and the Sigma, sorry, the OM system 150 to 600 is actually a very capable macro lens. So it does its best work at 150 millimeters. I'm gonna get basically 0.35 times magnification. That's in micro four thirds terms. You could double that for full frame equivalent. So it's actually really quite close. And that's just over half a meter. Now, if you want more working distance, you can shoot macros at 600 millimeters, but you get too much working distance, just under three meters. I had to be so far away from the butterflies. We're not getting that good a macro there. We're getting 0.5. 0.2 times magnification factor. So definitely go a little bit to the 150 range and get closer. So the OM system 150 to 600 is using stepping motors to autofocus and it does a pretty good job. Performance is what we expected. At 150 millimeters, even from near to far, it's quite snappy and quick. At 600 millimeters, it slows down if you're focusing near to far, but keep in mind, this is typical with many telephotos that have slower apertures and you're never really gonna go from something very close to you to something far off. 
And when you're shooting those long distances, the motors only have to move the glass a slight amount to change quite a long distance. So I'm finding that shooting wildlife, sports, that kind of stuff, this is perfectly fast enough. All right, let's talk about bokeh on the OM System 150 to 600. And first, let's look at specular highlights. We've seen very similar results in the Sigma 150 to 600, which makes sense. No onion rings at all, a bit of a soap bubble effect around the specular highlights. But what's very interesting, the Sigma 150 to 600, when shooting wide open, you would get some cat's eye in the corners, even extending a closer to the center than you might normally expect. However, on the OM System 150 to 600, we're cropping all that out because it's a micro four third sensor. So even shooting wide open, we're not getting that cat's eye effect. That's interesting. The other thing I will say is stopping down the lens, we're still getting nice round specular highlights. So although we have this soap bubble effect, the actual transitions from in focus to out of focus are quite smooth. And I like the backgrounds. They're not energetic. They're not distracting. They're not, you know, really busy. They're actually quite smooth. And that's exactly what you want out of a nice sports or wildlife lens. Now, one thing that I really liked about the original 150 to 600 was just how sharp it was. But remember that although this is a similar optical formula, it is on a different platform and there are some changes. So this is what I found on the OM-1. First off, shooting at 150, I was very pleased with the sharpness wide open at F5, its widest aperture. Stopping down the lens here to F8 in the center, you can see that basically there's some improvement. It's incredibly slight, almost not noticeable. When we look at the corners, it's a similar story. I actually like the corner performance at F5 at 150 millimeters and stopping down to f8 does improve things a little bit the corners seem to be more consistent with the centers because that would make sense that we're using less of the image circle of this full frame lens now at 600 millimeters our maximum aperture is f6.3 you can see here in the center it's not bad but it is just a touch little soft and that does absolutely improve quite a bit when you go to f8 in the centers it's the exact same story in the corner shooting wide open at f6.3 there's again that touch of softness stopping down to f8 does make it more consistent overall i'm going to say that if i'm shooting 600 millimeters i like to stop down even to my favorite aperture f7.1 at least if possible. So just like we found with the OM system 100 to 400, it's interesting that they're choosing to repurpose Sigma full frame telephoto lenses for their lens mount. And I mean, here's the positives. They are optically nice lenses and they are giving excellent reach. That's important, but we are getting something that's a little bit heavier, a little bit bigger and a little bit darker than it needs to be. And that is kind of unfortunate. I mean, this lens does give excellent reach. The 1200 millimeters I found fantastic for a lot of the wildlife shooting that we're doing here today. And I like the versatility of the excellent close-up and you can enhance that even further if you throw on MC14 or MC20 OM system teleconverters but we run into the same issue here and that we don't have a lot of light to begin with I like to shoot the 600 mil a little bit stop down beyond the 6.3 to get that extra sharpness and if I'm throwing a teleconverter on here it's really gonna hurt my ISO performance and in all honesty I don't mind carrying the weight of this lens I mean it's perfectly manageable but I just can't help but feel like I'm missing out on the benefits of micro four-thirds this is something we really saw on OM systems professional 150 to 400 i mean that's fantastic bright sharp not even that big i mean this is what we're looking for in micro four thirds here i feel like i'm getting a bulkier lens i'm just not getting the extra light that i do desperately need and i am carrying more weight than i need to and the last thing I want to focus on here is just the overall price because the Sigma 150 to 600 is a mirrorless lens is available for Sony E mount, L mount. And in that regard, it's $1,500 USD. Whereas when we look at the 150 to 600 here for one system, we're basically getting the same lens, but we're paying $2,700 for it. And I understand that there's some licensing costs and they have absolutely ported this to the OM system mount very well. I mean, it looks good. It fits good. It works with the Sync IS. Those are all positives, but $2,700 is substantial substantially more money. Anyways, I hope this video helps you guys decide if this is a right choice for you. Leave your comments below. Please subscribe to the channel. Click that notification bell if you haven't already and listen to the Petapixel podcast. You can find it on all your favorite podcasting apps. Just search for Petapixel podcast or watch it on the exact same channel. Thanks for joining us today. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you soon with more on Petapixel.